promised more diet related content in the context of this prep. So here we are. My current calorie intake is 2200 on standard days. I'll do that five days a week. And I also have two higher calorie days of 2600. And again, I think I'd give myself about a hundred calorie range each way to be pretty flexible. With today being a low calorie day for me of roughly 2200, uh, I'm trying to be pretty cognizant of my calories overall. So I have two whole eggs and then 150 grams of egg whites. Uh, I do try to do a more traditional style breakfast on the weekends because weekdays I typically do an overnight oats. I'll probably show that. Overnight oats with whey protein, peanut butter, etc., which is just way quicker for me during, uh, during the work week, right? So today I'm just looking for a high protein breakfast. Egg whites, absolutely love them. So I do 150 grams of this, adds about 15 grams of protein, two whole eggs for some taste, some good nutrients, gets about 25 grams of protein. And I also have an English muffin, actually a decent amount of protein in whole grain. So it takes me about 30 to 40 for this overall meal here, which is typically my goal. Also, if you have never heard of this, Good and Gather, squeezable guacamole, holy crap. It's tasty and most importantly, it stays good for a long time. I don't really know what's in it. It's kind of concerning, not that really high, high in sodium, but obviously a lot of people love avocados, guacamole, but you can have it for like a day, maybe two days and then it's in the trash if you haven't. So we've had that for well over a week and I'll show you uh, at some point what it looks like on the bagel or the English muffin and it's delish. Things here. So the first thing, spices and salsas, things like that can make a huge difference when you're cutting to make sure food isn't super boring. Let's face it, eggs, egg whites, and English muffin isn't the most exciting thing, but a couple of seasonings to look into. Everything but the elote from Trader Joe's. This is a lot of hype online, but it is really good, especially on eggs. And then Trader Joe's also has this spicy taco sauce. I'll also put a little hint of this on here. But again, things like chalua, salsas, spices, let that be a part of your cooking process. Saves you a lot from not eating out and sometimes a lot more calories. Second little tip here. So I don't weigh out this guacamole anymore. I did a few times and I kind of know eyeball roughly how much I need to see on the English muffin for it to be what I want to track it as, right? So a tip you can do, you probably can't really see this, but I obviously have my food scale here and I can tear it out to zero. So when you're starting off, it can be great to squirt it out, make sure it's 30 grams, you track it as 30 grams, that's awesome, right? Over time though, you can start to cover up the scale and see, all right, I'm gonna try to put on 30 grams and be a little bit conservative so you don't put on 60 and like, oh crap, now where do I put it, right? But let's say, I bet that's 25 grams. Let's see where I'm at. You'll never know if I was lying. 28 grams, right? So I'm gonna leave it as that. I don't need to move it to two grams so you have a perfect serving. But that's something that we can do a lot when we, even when we are tracking our food, weighing it out super diligently, or we wanna step away from weighing and tracking food so diligently, is to practice that. Practice putting it on there. You still have the food scale, right? But now I know, okay, when I look at this, that's roughly what 15 grams of guacamole looks like on the English muffin. And, helps us kind of reset that. Uh, that's really what tracking our food can do for people. It helps you reset a lot of your tendencies and your old behaviors. You may have no idea what 15 grams of peanut butter really is. So that's why weighing it out can be important. But then once you sort of do that little trick where you can test yourself how close your intuition is to what you can actually measure. All right, and that is the dish. English muffin, some guacamole, 150 egg whites, two whole eggs, a little bit of spicy taco sauce. Hello, welcome to the eight week out vlog here. Hopefully you enjoyed some of that diet content. We are starting off the week with of course our top single on back squat. This was a 395, did not move how I wanted it to. It wasn't terrible. I have a side by side of the single before, the 
week before at 385. And of course, the one on the right there, the weight is lighter, so it should move a little bit quicker. But I was surprised at just how much slower a 10 pound jump was. And that's kind of been a theme for the past couple of weeks, to be honest, that my top single has not moved particularly well, but then the volume work afterwards has been very good. And I won't spoil anything for my current week I'm on, but the same exact thing happened this week. The top single was better, I think, than the 395 was, but the volume work just felt like butter. It almost feels like I can triple what I can single right now. So I just need more practice with those heavy loads. Obviously, a lot of time away from like real heavy training. It takes it takes some time to know what that grind and kind of a force feels like. But other than that, squats are feeling great. I'm staying super healthy. Um, I have a 265 bench press coming up today as well that I was happy with that. Able to grab some spotters, which makes just a huge difference, I think, mentally with your confidence and uh, ability to go for it, right? Nobody wants to really push a single without a spotter. So the bench press work went really well here. Um, in regard to the diet content, I also shared, I don't think I ever shared my current body weight in that video, but I am sitting about 171, 172, and my goal is to get about 168 to 170 the week before the meet, and then actually do a pretty aggressive cut, at least for me, of that three to five pounds the week of the meet to get exactly to 165. I've been very conservative because I used to be in my career with kind of cutting weight. I used to try to like make weight just with food cuts and no sort of water manipulations or saunas or those things. I'm going to be a bit more aggressive uh, with this meat. Try it out. Again, I feel like this is um, some some uh, easy territory for me to uh, play around with that. Obviously, I can be more flexible with my diet currently. My training is going really, really well right now too, being a little bit heavier. So we're going to try it out. If it's a miserable week, we will uh, find out the week of the meet though. Uh, this was a deadlift session here. So moving into my top single, I think I hit 485 for the top single. That was my last warm up set there. Things here are feeling ho-hum. I have definitely noticed the maybe slipperiness of the bar, just kind of how humid and hot it is in the garage makes these reps to be a little bit harder than they would be on a stiff bar at the regular gym. So not a good or a bad thing. You just have to understand that different equipment, you may have different expectations there. Once again, my side by side here, I try to get that really tight with the starting weight. So when I look at that, same thing as the squats, it moves slowly, but it is what it is, right? And my, my back offsets, once again, felt amazing. My Pause deadlifts later on the week felt great on a stiffer bar, more climate controlled as well. So I'm still pretty happy with my with my deadlift uh, kind of technique. And again, staying pretty healthy here. So I'm, I'm happy there. And then moving on to the kind of the back half of the week, a bit more accessory focused. This is my two second pause on back squats. And again, this is a great example of this 352 here for I think a two second pause. It moved really well. And it's crazy to think that just a 40 pound jump on back squat felt way, way harder than that. So I think some of it has to do as well, which is getting comfortable with those heavy weights on my back and also training on the actual equipment. Because anytime I'm using this setup at the more formal gym, I feel quite dramatically stronger. I'm not sure if that's the environment, sure if it's the equipment maybe a mixture of the above, but really, really enjoyed this leg session. The squats felt great. And again, I don't put it on video, but do things like leg extensions, um, belt squats, some accessories on those days. And then rounded out the week here, this is my pause deadlift session. So I think I hit 440. We'll see here. This is the last warm up set. Just a pause right off the ground. Let's see what we're at here. Yeah, so this is 200 kilos or 440. And again, this felt pretty good. It wasn't perfect, but that's to me, that's still like an RPE of an eight, which is what I'm going for there. Volume worked, would, worked really well too. So again, only 45 pounds lighter than a non-pause. and It just felt way, way better there. So I'm excited to get these last couple of weeks, get some more specific work on the competition equipment. This is my uh, pause close grip bench press. Hit 122 kilos there. 
I think it's about 270, 265, something like that. And then a couple of back off sets of three here. This is my more variation movement the first week of doing that. Also, at the end of this video, I have kind of an overview of the entire week that I'll hit. I know it can be a little bit confusing as well. So this went solid, and I did hit squat and bench yesterday for my seven-week out training, and both of those went exceptionally well. If you want like real, real-time training, make sure to follow us on Instagram, at uh, myobrain, where I'm kind of posting it you know, day of with those things. And this is an overview of the entire week. So session one, very simple, competition squat, competition bench, one top single, then some back off work. Session two, some comp deadlift. And then three and four, again, is a more accessory focused sessions. But that's it for this vlog. Hopefully you guys liked it. See you next week.